Hello everyone and welcome to this video about the potion system in Diablo 4. We are going to be exploring this little icon here and exploring the system in Diablo 4, some tips and tricks and how it all works. So whenever you are out and about slaying enemies left and right, you will inevitably suffer quite a bit of damage yourself. Now when that happens, you can use your healing potion to regenerate some of the health, uh, health that you have lost. Now, the healing potion does two things. If we look at my health here, we can see that it delivers a portion instantly and then another portion over a three second duration. Now, this means that the healing potion does not give its full effect right away. It will just give you some of it. Now, if we hover over the healing potion, we can see that this particular one, the moderate healing potion, will heal me for 255 um, life instantly, and then 35% of our maximum life over 3 seconds. So that means it will scale depending on your maximum life, but only with the healing over time effect. The burst healing you get is actually a flat set amount. So that is how the potions work in Diablo 4. Whereas in other games like Diablo 2, we had a whole different system where we would buy lots of potion and it would be like a whole inventory management thing. Diablo 3, we had the single-use potion, but here we have, you know, kind of a mix. And if you ask me, it's actually the best potion system we have had in a Diablo game. So this is what the potion actually does. Now, whenever you run out of potions, you will need to replenish your stock. We can see right now I have five remaining out of a seven maximum. Now, whenever I have used all my healing potions, there are a few ways that I can get it back. This right here is a healing potion that drops from an enemy. If I pick that up, I will get one more stack of healing potion. Now, these potion balls or potions will drop randomly from minions and whenever you see them it's usually a good idea to just pick them up you know it's just kind of like Diablo 2 whenever a potion would drop you would pick it up from the ground whereas here it just does it automatically you just walk up to the potion ball and it picks it up now the other way is that you can return to town and once you're in town you locate the healer with this heart icon here we have Ardnal the healer so we will approach him there he is. Now, if we click him, he will replenish all of our healing potion supply. For free, instantly, we don't have to do anything else. He will also top off our health, so if we were missing anything, we would be at full health. So that is the other way you can do it. Now, bosses have a certain mechanical way of doing it, where you can see on their health bar, you can see it is divided up into segments and whenever you see this red line in the health bar um, and it reaches that point, it will drop healing potions. That means you can actually play around this so that you can see whenever the boss is going to drop healing potions. Now it varies how many they drop, sometimes it's two, three or four depending on the boss. Sometimes they drop potions two times, three times or four times, again it varies depending on the boss. So these are the three ways that you can replenish your potions. You either find them as orbs in the world, you get them from the healer in a town, or a healing shrine in the world, or they drop at these certain breakpoints on bosses. Now the other thing we're going to talk about is the maximum amount of potions. Right now I have seven potions total. When you start the game you only have four, so how do we increase it? Well if you open up our map, and then I can press W on a PC to open up the region progress board. Now the re region progress board is essentially you get renown, reputation with a specific region in the world. This is Fractured Peaks. Here we have the dry steps. And whenever you do that, you will unlock certain parts of that region. You can see here the first part of the dry steps will award bonus experience, gold and skill points. The second one will award potion capacity. Now these potion capacities, well essentially they increase our potion capacity, as simple as that. So we can see right now I have one from Dry Steps, I have one from Fractured Peaks, and then I have one from Skosglen. 
So that's the three extra potions that I get, getting me from the starting four up to my current seven. So that is the way you can increase the total amount of potions that you have. You can also upgrade your potions and you do that in a town and you locate the alchemist. Now the alchemist is this guy right here in this, you know, jug with a stirring thingy. And if we go up to the alchemist, which we have right here, we can upgrade the potions. At the very beginning of the game, you're going to have a weak healing potion that's going to heal 17 life instantly and then the 35% over 3 second duration. At level 10, you can upgrade it so that it heals 48 life instantly, but still the same amount over the 3 second duration. So whenever you upgrade your healing potion, it is only the instant burst heal that you actually upgrade. The other one is just a flat out 35% of your max life over 3 seconds. It scales automatically with the amount of health that you have. But even though that you only get the one part of the potion upgraded, it is still very much worth doing. It means a lot to get as much health as possible in an instant. It also just means that your potion will dish out more healing per potion used. So I highly recommend that you upgrade your potions whenever you reach these levels. And you simply press on the potion you want to upgrade, it tells you what materials you need, and a small gold fee, and that is it. Now if you do find yourself in a situation where you are lacking a specific ingredient, you can press the materials and stats tab, you can press this tab right here, and you can see all the plants and all the other stuff you have. Plants are what is used to upgrade the potions, and let's say I needed some angel breath. I can hover over it, and it says it's a rare herb used in the crafting of elixirs, can appear nearly everywhere. So that's not something we can really farm for. Uh, let's check out Biteberry. It says the Biteberry is a herb used in crafting of potions, elixirs, and incense. It is found in the Fractured Peaks. Okay, great, so that means I could take out my map, I could locate the Fractured Peaks, which is down here, and then the corresponding zones of Fractured Peaks, and I could go to them to find that specific herb out in the open world. So that is simply the way that the potion system works. If you ask me, it's a really, really elegant system. It works really, really well. You don't have to constantly buy potions from a vendor and put them from your inventory to your belt like you had to in Diablo 2. And But it also feels better than in Diablo 3 where you just had you know the one potion with the cooldown because here you have you have more potions and they, they become kind of a part of your rotation and the very cool thing is actually the the boss mechanic you can see when the boss is about to drop potions and you can kind of play around that uh, during a boss fight and that is actually super super fun a really interesting and cool mechanic I to be honest, cannot think of a better way that they could have implemented the potions. They feel great, they are impactful, meaningful, um, and they still feel like, you know, a potion. In, in Diablo 4, it was more like a skill, if that makes sense. It was, you know, a cooldown-based skill, to be honest. But here, they actually feel more like the potions from Diablo 2, without all the negative aspects of having to constantly micromanage them. It's much more automated the way you pick them up and the way that you use them. So yeah, that is actually it for this video. So thanks a lot for watching and I hope you found it useful. And hopefully we'll see you again next time. Ciao.